How you doing everyone? Welcome to another episode of Mechanical Warriors. My name's Josh Cav. Today I want to talk to you guys about different fuels that you can run inside your rotary engine. So I seen a post on Facebook the other day about a guy bought a new rotary. Uh, it was actually an RX-7 he bought and he wasn't sure what fuel he should put into the car. So we're going to cover that and we're going to cover other fuels that we can put in as well as premix and oils that you can use inside the rotary. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so the first thing I want to cover is the standard type of fuel to run inside your rotary engine. Now because rotary engines do either run a turbo setup or a, even the NAs run a really high compression rotor, and because of that, we have to run a higher octane fuel than your normal uh, standard fuel, which I think is around 95 octane level. Now, a lot of people think that the octane level is how explosive the fuel is or how potent the fuel is, and this is not true. The octane level actually stands for how res resistant the fuel is to pre-detonation. So 98 is our highest or our premium fuel that we have here in Australia on pump. It's pretty much at every service station. And this can be used for boost levels anywhere between 12 to 16 pounds of boost. If you're gonna exceed them boost levels, especially in rotary engines, I would not recommend using uh, 98. You need to jump up your octane level in order to combat the extra pressure that you're pushing into the motor. So our next jump in fuel would be Avgas. Now Avgas octane rating sits at around 100. The only problem with Avgas is it's a little bit harder to get because it is aeroplane fuel. Uh, you probably have to go to the airport to obtain some. So our next jump is E85. Now E85 ranks in at around 105 if it's, if it's really good quality on the octane level. So a lot better than Avgas and it has a good octane rating. So you can run boost levels between 25 to 30 pounds of boost plus using E85. Now the next jump from E85 is methanol. Now methanol can be used as a fuel or it can be used as a cooling agent sprayed in through water and alcohol or water and methanol injection into the intake system. Now the beauty about methanol is it is between 100 to 115 in the octane level depending on its quality and because it has such a high octane uh, level you can throw all kinds of boost levels at this stuff and it just does not pre-ignite. However the downside with methanol is, is it is it's a highly corrosive fuel so if you are using it you will notice it will corrode basically the inside of your engine uh, as, it, as it burns through the motor. So you've basically got to choose what you want to do with the car. If you're doing massive drag racing and you're going to be running extremely high boosts, methanol is your choice of fuel. However, you are going to be rebuilding fuel lines and certain parts of your engine due to de deterioration of the, the methanol basically eating away at, at all of your engine's components. The next step, jump down, E85. So this is a good street fuel for any high performance car running anything above the 16 pound upwards area of boost levels up to around your 30, 35 pound of boost. E85 will work just nicely. Anything below that, so Avgas, I haven't really experimented too much with Avgas myself in boost levels. But being 100, I would say you'd be safe around about 20 PSI, but I wouldn't exceed any more than that because it's only a couple of points higher than your 98. However, if you, if you do want to run a, a higher boost or around that, that uh, 20 pound of boost, I've had quite a lot of success using 98 in combination with methanol injection to counter the pre-detonation that happens with 98 fuel. I have actually a video or covered a video already on the installation of the water methanol uh, system that we did put in the RX-8. So I'll put a link to, the, to that video in the description below if you want to check that out. I find these two fuels a great combination to use together if you want to stay on the cheaper side because as you know rotaries chew a lot of fuel 
and this stuff here E85 up in Cairns where I am that goes for around $3.50 a litre. So if you're just driving around with E85 you're, you're chewing a lot of fuel plus with E85 you actually have to spray around 20 to 25 percent more fuel to make the same power as pump 98. So it's a lot more expensive to drive around with E85 in the tank. However, I have a solution to this problem, which we're gonna do on the RX-8, and that is to create two fuel systems. So we're going to have 98 and E85 in the tank together, in obviously in separate tanks and built together, with two fuel systems, so that the 98 will, will spray anything under the, around the 14 pounds of boost. But if we exceed the, that boost levels, we'll switch to the E85 fuel automatically. That's a new video that, uh, or, a, or a setup that I'm working on in the future, so stay tuned for that. A flex fuel setup is basically, you can pump either 98 or E85 into the tank, and depending on how much ethanol is inside the, the petrol because remember E85, all it is is 85% ethanol and the rest 98. So all it does is you have a, a sensor called a flex sensor which works out how much ethanol is in the fuel and then it will adjust your map to suit. So that's a flex fuel setup and I go into a bit more detail on how to tune a flex fuel setup in a couple of my other videos if you wanna check them out as well. E85 is a great fuel to use but it is expensive so a flex, people who have flex fuel setups, they tend to mix it, you know, I, I try and mix it 50-50 because anything above sort of your 65 to 70% ethanol rating, you've got that safety margin there within the fuel. It pumps up your octane rating, so it will cover your, your higher boost levels. So in summing up, basically if you've got, got a rotary, especially a turboed rotary, and you're wanting to know what fuel to put in it, Premium 98 is the least expensive fuel that you can use. And remember that you don't want to exceed anything beyond 16 pounds of boost. So anything under 16 pounds of boost, 98 will do just fine. So anything higher, you need to experiment with other fuels. And of course, you'll need to tune your engine to suit uh, if you're going down that road. So the next thing I want to talk about is lubrication. So obviously with a rotary, a rotary has apex seals, which I'm not gonna to get too much in detail, but they basically sit at the apex of the triangle rotor. Each apex has a seal, which they call the apex seal. Because we have metal on metal rubbing, we need to have some form of lubrication to stop that metal from destroying itself. How Mazda do it from factory is they actually pump the engine oil from the sump up through two little lines and inject it into the top of the rotor housings. I'll put a little picture on how that works up on the screen. But basically, so it's burning its own oil, which obviously solves the problem of lubricating the apex seals, but it creates a bunch of other problems. First of all, engine oil is not designed to be burned. And one of the byproducts of burning oil is carbon. And carbon is a rotary's biggest enemy. It can go through the housing and cause scoring and, and scratches and drop your compression and cause all sorts of problems. So what, what can we do to combat that? There's a few things that you can do. If you still wanna run your oil metering pump in the rotary engine, you can. We, you can basically buy a kit, which I'll, I'll leave a, a description of that as well for one on eBay or somewhere like that for a, a, an oil metering bypass kit they're called. Basically what it does is it puts a small tank inside the engine base. You can put your own oil in there and it will pump that oil into the, the rotor housings rather than your engine oil. There's two benefits to that. One, you can run an oil that's designed to be burned like a two stroke oil or something along them lines. And two, instead of using a a mineral-based oil, which is what they burn inside the rotary engine because a mineral-based oil has, its, has a lower a carbon byproduct of burning it, so, but it's quite expensive. So when you do that, you can run something like this HPR30 W60 in your oil, which is a lot cheaper to run inside the engine because you're not, you, remember, you're not burning it inside the combustion chamber. So. Another option you can 
run is castor oil, which is something that I recommend running in your rotary. Now, if you don't want to use the oil metering pump, and I recommend getting rid of the oil metering pump, it's probably one of the first modifications you should do if you, are, if you own a rotary setup. They are prone to fail, and they fail through their, a number of different ways, but one of the common problems is the, the little hoses that go to the injectors on top of the housings can crack and break. And as soon as that happens, you're no longer getting oil lubricating your apex seals. And basically it's kiss goodbye to your rotary engine. The most safest method for lubricating the apex seals is pre-mixing your fuel with oil. Now I recommend using castor oil. A lot of people have said castor oil is no good because it doesn't stay suspended in the fuel. But I have done a, an experiment on that proving that it's wrong. It actually does stay suspended in the fuel and it's a great lubrication system. There is one byproduct to, it's, it's a type of, well it is a rice bean oil and it does leave a very sticky residue if there is too much in the mix. So you do have to be careful to mix it right. I mix mine at 120 to one. And some people say that's a little bit too lean, but I find it's, it works perfectly. I've, I've had boroscopes inside my rotor housings. There's no scoring or scratching or any buildup of residue that I can see on the rotors so far. So guys, in summing up, we've covered lubrication in the engine as well as inside the combustion chamber for our apex seals. We've covered which types of fuels can be used inside the rotary engine and what boost levels that we can achieve using them fuels. And we've also covered some of the byproducts and the problems that the different fuels present as well as the different oils present inside the engine. So there you have it guys. Go through all that information, work out what, you, what it is you want to do with the engine, whether it's street racing or just an everyday driver or drag racing, whatever it is, pick what you're going to do and then select your fuel type and fuel system setup and lubrication system to suit. However, even if you are driving as an everyday driver, I would always recommend get rid of the oil metering pump and pre-mix your fuel because uh, it is the most safest method of lubrication for a rotary engine. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next one.